Hey everybody, it's Carpo here. I wanted to talk for a minute about intention, or maybe manifestation of energy that we put into things. I wanted to do this in high def, but only because I can show you these beads. I wanted to start off with this necklace. This is my Jasper, Beach Jasper necklace. I bought the beads, strung them up. I've had to restring it a few times, kids keep breaking it. I really like these beads. I think that each one of them has its own beautiful pattern. And I went through yesterday and I looked at every one of these beads. And individually, on the basis of their individual color and patterning, and really got into the bead. Now let me see if I can show you this one, because I don't know if these are going to show up on this definition of camera, but... It looks like there's a little tree on there, you see that? And, and there are just so many different designs and patterns. It's all beach jasper. Funny thing was, when I strung it up, there's one bead in here. This one right here, the clear one, that looks like it doesn't belong. It's not only clear, but it's larger than the other ones, leading me to believe that it accidentally got thrown in the batch. But it didn't, because it has a little bit of green on it. So. That has nothing to do with the video. I just thought it was interesting because I keep that one on there, even though it's the uh, the uh, oddball, because it's just part of it. So when I was sitting here looking at the necklace, I started thinking about stones in general. I've had a lot of conversations with people about stones, the energy behind stones, crystals, and whatnot. And here's what I found in my looking into it. And I may be wrong here, but it seems like the most beautiful stones are the most revered. And the most rare are the most revered. But not only the most revered in the sense of their rarity, but in the sense of they particular, hold these particular energies, people claim, that maybe other stones don't. Now think about rose quartz. It's considered to invoke love. Amethyst, passion. How come they always correlate to the colors of the stone? Because there is rose quartz is just because of a particular, um, you know, the way the quartz was formed. I don't know if it's the iron in it or what, but the components that give it this color that make it a particular type aren't necessarily, don't have any necessary properties of, on their own. Here's what I'm going to get at before I go too far into this. I, I, I have been, I had a conversation with somebody a while back and they were talking about the power of stones. And I said, well, you know that I've had, I've had stones that were my lucky pocket stones or whatever. I had a pocket full once, found out, and I, and I realized one of them wasn't a real stone after a period of time. Um, this has happened before. I use a fake crystal skull for my meditation. That's a perfect example. It's actually, where is it? It was right here. Here it is. Yeah. It's a little purple plastic skull. I always wanted a crystal skull. Of course I can't afford one. My wife got me this for Christmas and uh, I often set it up on my little puja table or whatever. It represents something to me. It's not about the material it's made out of nor where it's been or where it comes from. It's what it represents to me. And I feel like stones are the same way. Someone would wear, if someone were to wear a necklace that was all black beads and they were saying that they were plastic, people would not be impressed. If they were wearing the same necklace that looked exactly the same and it was made out of black onyx, it's more impressive because it's a natural stone and because you found some good quality onyx and made them into beads rather than a manufactured type thing. The reason why this really hit home for me is because these are natural patterns, you know, these are natural patterns. Each one of these has, it's like a planet, it has all types of surfaces. There's little grooves taken out with crystals and, uh, you know, little quartz pockets and stuff. But when it comes to clear quartz, a person may buy an entire necklace of beaded clear quartz. My question is, why wouldn't you just get glass in that sense? Well, because the crystal, the quartz, supposedly has energy can store information. I'm not disputing these claims, I'm just, I, I just know that there's not enough evidence to really support that crystal itself is uh, 
has any more um, ethereal energy than, say, a regular stone. I made a video yesterday about, and in it I mentioned how when we see in the spectrum of colors that we see in, we use that to gauge the beauty of something that we're picking up. We pick up a stone and it's gold, it's beautiful. We pick it up and it's shiny and pretty. Different animals see in different spectrums. So if we were to say, so we saw in, whoops, if we saw in infrared as our normal mode of sight, we would be looking for the rock that was the, the, the warmest. Say we walk out after dark and uh, whichever one retained the heat the longest would show up the most and that would be the most beautiful rock. It would have nothing to do with the actual color of the rock. But that would be the color to us because we see an infrared. Or the one that refracts UV light in cer a certain way in the daytime that you may see if you saw it in UV. This is all speculation on my part. But it makes sense to me that the reason why we gauge these things as beautiful is because of the spectrum of colors that we see in. So my thought is that the energy or power of a stone is no more than the person who has the intent behind it. And I could be wrong on that. There very well may be an energy just to crystals, particular crystals themselves. But when we're talking about uh, diamonds are really where I wanted to go with this because, you know, you can wear a big fat five carat diamond on a ring um, or you could wear a five carat cubic zirconia on a ring. The price is outrageously different. <laughs> I mean, you can get a cubic zirconia for, you know, hundredth of the price of a really big diamond. And then you take it out and you show it to people. And they won't know the difference. Even professional jewelers have had a hard time distinguishing diamonds from cubic zirconia. Yet we still desire diamonds. Why? It's obviously not the beauty or the luster of the diamond itself, because that luster can be matched with zirconia. What it comes down to is the claim of, look at what I have. I have a diamond. I see it the same way with with uh, jewelry. You know, when I got married, I, I see gold and silver as being... Uh, why do people buy gold and silver rings? Because it's traditional. Something that people have always done, because they hold value. Well, not silver as much. People mostly want gold. And then they've tried to exceed and go to platinum and palladium and all these different metals that they want to get. When I bought my wedding ring, it's tungsten carbide. It's the strongest metal. It's the stuff that they put on the tips of power tools and blades in order to cut stronger and longer. This ring here was only $20, you know, and to me it's way better than any gold ring ever could be. It's something different, something original. And the beauty is if it gets, uh, something happens to your finger, you can just put it in a, a clamp and just shatter it. <laughs> but anyway, I it's metals, it's, it's, it's stones, it's all these different things that are precious to us because we consider them precious. Because they're rare. Precious because they're rare. Now, if only we had the same regard for rare types of people, or rare types of behavior, if we only gave it the same luster as we do gold and diamond. So, I just kind of wanted to get, get that out, that, that I think that a lot of these... A lot of this new age type desire for particular stones and stuff is um, is nothing more than a desire to have something rare. And we are assuming that rarity determines something's value. So in a way, it does. Uh, we've used the gold gold standard for you know a thousand years or whatever, and uh, much longer people have been using gold, of course. But the gold standard's been around, and people use that as a basis for money because it's something that we can understand. Something that we can use. That gold is mined at a certain rate, and we can only spend it at a certain rate. So this makes sense. This gives gold value, and this is why people would find gold great. But when it comes to particular stones or rocks, I mean, how much value do they really hold beyond their beauty? And that was what I really wanted to say, was that this beach jasper, you know, I probably paid 20 bucks for these beads, each one of them I could spend all day studying and there's something wonderful and beautiful about that but why would I buy a necklace like this of all one color of stone just to say it's pure just to say oh look at the quality of these stones in other words I don't buy stones for their 
the idea of how pure or great they are. I buy them for their beauty, for their interest and their intricacy. And um, I just guess I just wanted to bounce that off people and say, what do you think? Do you think that crystals really hold particular powers? And if so, how much of that is manifest by mankind? How much of it is intent by the history behind that stone? How much of our own reality do we create? I don't like to spend a lot of money on fancy rocks and stones. I just like to buy pretty stuff and wear it for the beauty of it. But if this was plastic, then so be it. You know? That's the thing. I don't really like plastic. Maybe I'll go with glass, you know, glass beads. I've had glass beads that I thought were quartz or crystal for a long time. Find out they're not. So what? You know, they're just as pretty. But we want that energy behind the stone. So I guess my question is how much energy is really behind those stones? I don't know. We'll find out, or maybe not. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if I can, before I go, show you some of these beads. And there's that big one. I love Beach Jasper. It's just beautiful. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. Hope you have a great day.